Hi there, welcome back. Last year we created two speech bubble templates using Fusion Shape tools in DaVinci Resolve 17, you can check it out through the link up here or in the description below. Today I will show you how we can improve the usability of the template with new features and more inspector controls in the edit page. As usual, you can also download the speech bubble template through the link in the description below. These are the two speech bubble templates, one for oval shape and the other is for rectangle shape. Add the oval bubble to the timeline, but nothing is showing in the viewer. Looks like it's not working. To see if there is anything wrong, we can go to the workspace menu and select the console. In the console display, there are errors saying could not find the font. Because this template was created in Windows, and I used a font called Bradley Hand, which is not available in the Mac Studio I'm currently using. Change the font to Arial. We now have a bubble with text showing in the viewer. This tells us when we create templates, it's always a good idea to use commonly used fonts for text, such as Arial, or the default font Open Sans used by DaVinci Resolve. In the inspector, we can change the text, colors and the border. But there is no control for the pointer, such as changing the direction, or resizing the bubble, and moving the bubble. Although we can use the video transform controls to resize or change the position, it doesn't feel like a native control with the bubble itself. Go to the Fusion page. Double click the node to expand the group. The node tree is not very complex. It mainly consists of two parts. A text node merges with the result of a group of shape nodes. We use an ellipse shape and a polygon node to create the oval bubble and a pointer. There are two branches out of the ellipse and polygon nodes. One branch is used for the outline and the other one is for the background. The Boolean nodes control how the nodes combine with each other and set the result color. A shape render node must be used at the end to render the result that we can use with other fusion tools. Right now, the ellipse, the polygon and the text have separate position controls. To link them together, we can use simple expressions. Select the ellipse node and enter equals sign in the X offset field to enable the simple expression. We can type in the expression text1.center.x minus 0.5. Because the center of a text node is the actual coordinate, while the shape nodes are using offset to position the shape. So we minus 0.5 from the text center. Similarly, we modify the Y offset with simple expressions, text one, center, Y minus 0.5. Now, if we select the text node, we can use on-screen control to move the text. The ellipse also moves, but in the vertical direction, they are not in sync. That's because the shape nodes are square based, while the text node is using video aspect ratio, 16 by 9. So we need to change the expression for Y offset to multiply the aspect ratio, which is 9 divided by 16. OK, this is working now. Select the shape polygon node. Modify the X offset and Y offset with simple expressions so that they are linked to the ellipse nodes X and Y offset. If you don't know the name of the parameter, we can drag a pick whip from the add button to the parameter itself. All shape nodes have the same parameter naming structure. And add the ellipse node name in the front. Or if you are not sure about the name of the target parameter, you can select both nodes in the editor so that they are available in the inspector and drag the pick whip to the target parameter in the ellipse node, which automatically adds the target parameter name. But now the pointer disappears. If we resize the polygon shape, we get two pointers on each side of the ellipse. 
We need to change the pointer shape to work with the main ellipse. Add a S render node. Link to the polygon node. Bring the render node to the left side viewer. So that we can see the shape result we will be working on. Select the polygon node. Change the side to 4. Reset the angle. Change the size. Add a rectangle and a boolean node. Join both rectangle and polygon to the boolean node. Disconnect the render node and relink it to the boolean node. Select the rectangle node. Link the rectangle offset to the polygon with simple expressions. Also connect the width and height parameters. Change the Y offset expression to shift down the rectangle by half the height. We now have only the bottom half of the polygon, and we will use this as the new pointer. As we want to change the angle of the point, we can add Shape Transform node after the Boolean node. Set the Transform pivot to the center of the pointer, which is the offset of the polygon node. and use the transform node to control the size and angle. Disconnect the polygon node from the existing boolean nodes. Reconnect them to the transform node. All right, an oval speech bubble is now completed. We can use the text center to control the position. Use the ellipse node to control the size of the shape or change the angle. But the text is not following the rotation. Select the text node. Modify the layout rotation Z with a simple expression and link it to the angle of the ellipse node. OK, now if we change the ellipse angle, the text also changes. To change the pointer size and angle, we can use the controls from the transform node. All right, we have done the improvements based on the previous macro. Next, we will create a new template. Delete this second render node, which was used temporarily. Select all the nodes inside the group. Right click and choose macro, create macro. Enter the macro name. Export the basic parameters from the text node. Font, style, size, color and tracking. The outline controls from the outline node. The outline color control in the first boolean node. Change the name to outline color. The shape color settings in the second boolean node. We can change the name to background color and the pointer controls from the shape transform node. Rename the parameter to pointer width, pointer length, and pointer angle. Select the size and angle controls from the ellipse node. Choose save as group from the option menu. Save the macro to the generator template folder. Close the macro editor and go back to the edit page. Here in the effects panel, the new template is ready for use. If it's not there, you can restart DaVinci Resolve to load it into the panel. Add it to the timeline, and we can use the parameters in the inspector and change the text and shape. Or turn on the fusion overlay and use on-screen controls to change the size and angle. If you want to organize and group the parameters in the inspector, you can check the video up here. For additional ease of use in the edit page, I've made more changes to the macro and created a new template called Essential Speech Bubble. We can switch the bubble shape between rectangle and ellipse. The fusion overlay controls are now linked to the bubble. We can change the size and angle of both shape and pointer directly in the viewer. All right, that's all for today. Please leave comments if you have questions or suggestions. 
Thanks for watching, and see you next time.